everyone. Today we're going to be talking about making hematology slides. Really excited about this video, so I hope you have as much as fun as I'm going to have. Um, I saw a new technique that a tech was doing at the hospital, and I thought it was really cool, so I tried it out, and hopefully I can do it nicely for you on the video. And I think it'll help a lot of students out or newcomers, and that would be really awesome. So uh, first thing I want to show you is this is my specimen. Okay, it's a purple top known as an EDTA tube. It's potassium EDTA. If you don't know um, much about that tube, please see the phlebotomy video about the different uh, blood draw tubes. Now what you wanna see here is that the plasma is actually a really nice color. I'm gonna pull it up so you can see it. Um, when you get this kind of tube in the lab, it should be completely um, resuspended in regard to it should not have settled like this. But if it has set, you can look at the hematocrit right here and that's just the settling of all the cells uh, to judge to see if it's low or high. This one seems fine and it's always in relation to the amount of plasma that's in the tube. Okay, so if I pull this up, the plasma is actually a beautiful color. Um, it doesn't look lipemic, icteric, or hemolyzed. And the next thing I'm going to do now is cap it and I'm going to slowly um, resuspend the cells into the plasma. Okay, so I'll get back to you after I'm done rocking this. Um, as you can see, this was ordered for a CBC, an automated diff. That would be performed on an automated analyzer and only when um, a flag or results warrant a, a smear to review, then we would actually do um, a smear review or a um, manual WBC differential or um, something to that effect, a platelet estimate. All of that would only be done if the automated CBC results indicate that need. Okay, so this is gonna be really fun. We have a new technique that I wanna try out and uh, see if we can do this. So what I wanna point out here is first, you need to have slides that are on the right side. So in order to know that your slide is the correct face up, you should be able to read the word specimen from left to right. If it looks like this, that's the wrong side. <laughs> okay, so keep it this way. Also. You're going to need to have a spreader slide and um, a slide that your specimen is going to be on. Um, so if knowing that that's the case, you want to make sure that you have clean slides, okay, and that they're not chipped. See, this one is chipped. Now, if we were doing the regular... Um, <laughs> the regular way of doing a slide, um, or a smear rather, you would be using this as a pusher slide. And if you have this chip here, then that's going to possibly, um, you know, draw a line <laughs> in your smear and you don't want that. So um, we're doing a different technique today and we're actually gonna be using the side of the slide. Ooh, ah. This is intriguing. Um, it was intriguing to me too. I saw this person doing it and I thought, hey, that's a really cool idea because in the normal um, way to make a smear, you have to regulate the, you know, the level of incline that you have on the spreader slide against you know, the flat slide that you have, which is having the specimen being spread on it. And I don't know about you, but I can be a little shaky uh, with my hands. Um, I am ambidextrous, um, and I do mo mainly write with my right hand. However, I pipette and everything with my left hand, and so it's kind of weird. Um, but when I do things like this, I use my right, and I end up losing the control over the spreader slide when I'm moving forward because I'm so focused on trying to do it right that I kind of just lose the ability to spread it evenly. So what we're going to try to do today is we put um, the drop, and obviously the size of the drop is important, um, but we're going to use the side here and we're going to spread it this way. So. Um, 
it was extremely amazing to me to see this person do it. So um, we're going to try it and see if we can make this look really great. So um, let me uh, get this stuff prepared and I'll be right back. Okay, so the cool thing about this was that the person was using um, clot uh, checking sticks, which was really cool. Um, and it was something I'd never seen before. So the great thing about that technique is that when you use these um, sticks, you are able to clot check before you even uh, pull the specimen out. So in that case, you know, we would be doing this, right? And then we would put um, the drop onto the spe or onto the slide. This one definitely looks clotted, so we're not going to do that. Um, let me get a different one. Okay, I'm clot checking my second one. This one does not look clotted, so that's good. All right, it's a nice bright red. It means it's fresh. It could or it could not be. It all depends on the date, obviously. Um, okay, so then what we're going to do now is put a drop on there. And, okay, I did this on purpose. Or at least I'm going to say I did. This drop is way too big. And this one is just about right. Uh, when we try to spread one that's too big, you're going to get a really, really thick um, film which is not going to work out too well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, side of the spreader slide. You put it in contact with the lower slide, pull back, let it spread, and then go across. Okay, so you get a thin film. But as we said, this one's going to be too big. Um, so we will see how that ends up going. I'm wiping in between to keep my spreader slide clean. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to do this one too. Okay, so this one's more of a realistic size. We pull it back, let it spread across, and then go like that. All right, so we're getting a pretty good um, slide there. Yes, there are tails there, which is not good. Um, but I think that's pretty darn good for a video. <laughs> it's very hard to do it on video and it's, you know, a little nerve wracking. We'll try one more so you can see this again. Um, so like I said, it was really cool. This person was using sticks. I had never seen anybody use sticks before instead of using a dropper. Oh, that one's probably too big too. Everything that I'm doing wrong is on video. It's so great. <laughs> so pull it back and see, it's not going to spread out evenly. It's going to be way too thick. So here, um, if you'll notice at the end, that's not good at all. Okay, that's a really bad slide. Okay, you want something that is going to have a sheen uh, around the feathered edge. And you're going to want to keep uh, replacing that spreader slide so that you have a nice clean one. So we'll try one more time and I apologize if I don't get a really good one. Um, you can use a dropper too if you'd like or even one stick to put, oh my goodness that's so big. You can use a dropper or um, just one stick if you want to to try this out. Um, the main thing that I'm pointing out is that we have um, an idea for, this is embarrassing, um, for using a spreader slide differently. That's the main point we're making here. You don't have to use a, there we go. You don't have to use the sticks. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. All right, so you can, that's the dirty side. Um, you can push it back and let it spread and then spread it across. This one was bad too. I swear it's so hard to do on camera. I did some really great ones <laughs> last week, um, but I want to show you this one too because it's very poorly done. Notice that in the thick area where you should have, um, you know, a good 
thick covering of the specimen on here, you have all these horizontal lines, which shows unequal pressure when spreading. And that's the same um, idea as to having these tails out here. Okay, let's see, this one's drying. Um, no, we can't really see a good sheen on there. If you have a good one, see that? See that sheen? It's trying to focus on the window instead. Um, there's a sheen that goes around. See how, come on, focus camera. See how there's that kind of halo around that thicker area, but it gives like a sheen. That's where your feathered edge is gonna be. I'm so sorry this isn't working so well. Um, I don't think I can really show you, um, but there is a sheen that goes around the thicker area to give you that feathered edge look. I guess you can kind of see it like that. And that would show you when there's a good slide. This one's a pretty good one. It's rather thick, but you can see how there is uh, thinning out on the feathered edge up here and if I can get the sheen to work that'd be great see you have a sheen that's around it that shows a good slide right there so it's the um, you know where the thick meets the thinner area and that's basically where you're going to be performing most of your counts so you want to go uh, to where the red cells aren't on top of each other all right so I hope that's I hope that's helpful. I know that it wasn't perfect by any means, um, but when you practice doing it, it's a lot better without a camera. <laughs> and uh, to me, it, it seemed like it was a cool way for um, people to explore how to make um, good peripheral blood smears. And that way, maybe if you have um, questionable dexterity sometimes, if using the side of the slide uh, would help you because it gives you more control over the actual pressure um, that you put on there. All right, thank you so much, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.